We actually believe, just like in cable, the fact is that, you know, cable actually programs and packages video channels, video content in a way that actually all, almost probably everybody in this room pays a cable bill and you also pay for an internet bill. Uh, we kind of believe the same thing uh, at NBC Universal uh, about mobile, that the carriers are in a unique position to package and deliver uh, video programming. And they have the ability to make discovering that programming you know, uh, easier and better, tie it to increased interactivity, you know, uh, be able to uh, tie it to special promotions they can do or advertising on our, on our networks. Uh, so, in, and frankly, look, cut through all the, all, all the, all the kind of uh, positioning here, we frankly need to, as an NBC Universal, make the cat carrier business model work. You know, I don't care what anybody in this room says, the majority of the money that companies like us uh, make today, you know, this in the future it will be an ad, probably an ad-supported model, but today it's the license fees to the carriers. And that allows us to, frankly, invest in technology companies <laughs> that, you know, of all you folks that invest in these new technologies to push, to push the boundaries. Now, having said all that, we also believe that, look, just like we want to make our internet properties work, our widgets work, um, we want a very robust direct-to-consumer experience, and we are investing heavily in that. And so we believe, just like you can go to NBC.com and watch full episodes of Heroes or The Office, that you should be that we definitely want you also to engage Verizon FiOS, AT&T UVerse, Comcast, uh, cable experiences. So we believe that making content ubiquitous on these platforms and allowing different partners to package it and serve it in different ways, including ourselves, is what's going to make this uh, make this a robust business. Content producer, we're looking to get our content out either way, if it's behind the old garden or open. Um, I think obviously everyone is beholden to the carries at this point because they control the final application. I think the future, though, you might see where search takes a bigger play in this, where the carriers aren't necessarily going to be beholden to an NBC Universal on a big end, a 1938 media on a small end. It could be just where it's open, where they get their search together and they're pulling everything from the web into the open. So, you know, that's a definite possibility moving forward. And in the, how are we supporting this? How are they maintaining a business model in terms of the value? I mean, I, I think. You see, it's a difficult proposition because you want to license content, of course, and pay for good content, but everyone's also saying that content's become so cheap and nearly free. Um, so it's, it's, it's difficult to work out at this point. You know, as for the carriers, I mean, they're looking to move hardware in addition to services, so, you know, it's kind of up to them, I think. So, um, why do we care so much about the carriers? I do when I'm advising them how to be more innovative with product development department. But from an industry perspective, why are we tiptoeing around? Why are we dancing around? Why, we didn't care about AOL uh, back in the early days. They're a provider of content. They're a carrier. But yeah, exactly. They're a carrier. They're not a content provider. They're not a media. Again, but they have to make money. So the idea is how are they going to be making money? Exactly. But let's come back to that in a minute. Don't, don't prohibit access to products and services that are there already via the technology that's there already just because they can't make money. So I mean, why do you advise them for? Well, you understand if you look at NBC, you well, first of all, NBC, if you, if you say you've got lots of content, brilliant. But what's the point if it's not accessible? If people can't afford to download that content because the tariffs are prohibitively expensive. In the UK, I've got an unlimited data tariff for the iPhone. I come to the US and I expect to be able to buy a, pay per, a, a prepaid data set. So I don't have to worry about you know, paying £7 or what is it, $15 per megabyte. That's just bloody ridiculous. 
One of the best products I've seen on the market is Quick, for example, and that deserves to be on the desktop of a mobile device because it's so expensive to have an application certified because they have to go through um, how accessible it is by multiple uh, devices and browsers. I think we should stop worrying first and foremost about the carriers. Worry about how to create the content, how to get it to the consumer, and how to sell it to the consumer. Yes, but then also you want to make money, you want to be able to collect them? Me? You're talking about the carriers. The carriers is only one stakeholder in the ecosystem. You make money, and how do you expect them to monetize them, to manage it? They don't have iOS that we rolled out at this point where they can actually track. There are ways in which you can monetize it. You know, one example could be you could force them to sit through a one minute advertisement of a video or a 30 second play, whatever it is. But the, the carriers, I'd like to pause on the point, the carriers is one stage.